voices sing on high, a shepherd piped along, sing glory, 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 God's love in given and birth, be not afraid, sing glory, and peace to all the earth, be still and you We have come into this house and we've gathered in the name of Jesus and we've come to worship him. We welcome all of you on this, the last Sunday in an old year, the year of 2020. I don't know about you, but I for one will be glad when this 2020 has expired. I'm looking forward to a new day, beginning of a brand new and more healthy year. The flowers on the altar are given to the glory of God this morning and in loving memory of Walter Leland, Sr., who had a birthday on December 25th, the same day as our Savior. Uh, we thank his family and we thank all of you for your continued support of the ministry of Trinity Church. Our call to worship the Magi waited and watched, knowing something wondrous would be happening. The darkness that invaded all lives was banished by the light of that star. Let us celebrate the bright shining of God's love in our lives. Amen. Would you pray with me as we open up with prayer? God of promise and mysterious light, be with us this day as we journey in our faith to meet your gift. Give us courage and hope along our way as your light will continue to glow brightly in our path, leading us to service and discipleship in Jesus' name, amen. I have a praise uh, this morning. There's a song in the air, United Methodist hymn number 249. Baby. 
prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our New Testament lesson this morning is taken from the book of St. Luke, chapter 2, the 22nd through the 40th verses. Hear these words and be blessed. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanil, of the tribe of Asher, she was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. May the Lord add a rich blessing upon the reading, hearing, understanding, and above all, the living of his living word. As you join with me in our joys and concerns, we are joyous this day that uh, flowers on the altar, the altar is such a beautiful sign of God's continued presence with us. And we thank you for all your faithful support of our ministries in this church. And we are joyous that uh, so many of us have survived through the years. This has been a difficult year since we've known about this pandemic. But nothing that the Lord cannot handle. 
So we ask you all to continue to be encouraged. And if you are called by your physicians, please do make your body available to take that uh, shot, that virus shot. And we thank you for your faithfulness. Let us pray. God of all we are and all we hope to be, we thank you for this year of 2020, the year of challenge for so many of your people. But we pray, O oh God, because of your presence with us, we have come through and are looking for victory in our future. Bless, we pray, those who are confined to their beds of affliction, those who are in hospitals, those, O oh Lord, who are suffering for depression or for whatever human weakness might be upon them. We pray, Lord, that your hand will be upon us. We ask, Lord, that you will particularly heal our land. Be with our leaders that they may know that you are indeed in charge of all that is. We praise you and we bless your name as we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Would you join me in the prayer that Jesus taught all of us to pray? Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you join us as we recite the World Methodist Social Affirmation? It is a responsive affirmation we pray that you will respond with us. We believe in God, creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ, incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe, God, help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough, in all responsible youth of the earth's resources. Glory be to God on high and on earth, peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action, through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology, which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. 
thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Our hymn of preparation this morning is Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming. United Methodist Hymn number 216. sermon title this morning is Who Could Imagine a King? Would you pray with me? Gracious Lord, we pray for your presence with us. We pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our collective hearts might be acceptable in your sight. We pray, Lord, that you will redeem us, that you will deliver us in the day of salvation. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Two days after Christmas, I could ask many of you whether your expectations of gifts or your gratitude might have reached the level that satisfied your needs this year. How many of you folks got exactly what you had asked for? Which few of us can honestly say that the human beings in our experience are ever able to meet or exceed our expectations at Christmas time? Some will have exceeded everything, every dream, each ambition we could ask for but only in very rare and in a few circumstances can they surpass our longings or satisfy our highest expectations. Sometimes we are so close to fulfillment, but sometimes we come close only to fall short due to some minor glitch or unplanned turn of events. 
Often some detail is distorted, some essential ingredient unavailable. A key and vital link is missing. Sometimes just a little thing prevents our expectation from becoming reality. And sometimes it is all about timing. Some things just cannot come to fruition until until the time is right. The moment exact, the season in full swing, the day ripe for the harvest. We are limited in so many ways. Yet God is so wise that God can see beyond our wants and perfectly see our needs. You see, our God lives outside of all time constraints. There are no limits for God. There are no restrictions or laws capable of limiting the activities of God. Today's scripture reading from Luke Luke reports the time came for Mary and Joseph to do what the law of Moses says a mother is supposed to do after her baby is born. The King James translation offers it this way. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. When the time was right. Jesus was brought to the temple. The Mosaic law labeled any Jewish mother who gave birth to a son unclean until after her baby was circumcised. She was required to stay home until this was accomplished. After the circumcision was complete, she had to stay home for another 33 days before she could offer a sacrifice to the Lord. Furthermore, this firstborn son belonged to God. So after waiting for those days to be accomplished according to the law, Mary and Joseph came forward at the right time to offer their sacrifices before the Lord. As we consider the scripture passages a little more, we encounter Simeon. Simeon was an old man. He was a devout man who had come to Jerusalem to die. It might be said that his his time was fully come. Mary's time had come. And so God had arranged for them to arrive in Jerusalem at an appointed time. Both were there, not expecting to see the other, and perhaps not knowing how God had included both of them in God's plan of redemption for the human family. The time was right. We have some limited knowledge of the expectations of the Jewish people. They were in eager expectation of a Messiah. They were standing on the promises of God in hopeful expectation of a liberating warrior, a military or political leader to liberate them from their circumstances. They had hoped and prayed for a mighty man of valor after the Gideon model of Judges 6, chapter 6, verse 11 and following. These people wanted some powerful person to lift them out of the problems of the day. They cried daily for a leader whose prowess could send the most formidable enemies scurrying in defeat. The time had come for such a leader. As they look back in their history, they saw at once another Moses who had the full backing and authority of Moses' God to be able to deliver them. As they recanted their history, they saw men like Samson and women like Deborah, men like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and David, and women like Shipporah and Pua, the Hebrew midwives who feared God more than they feared Pharaoh. They looked back over where the Lord had brought them, and they had expectation that because the Lord had delivered Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so would he also send a mighty power to rescue them. 
Likewise, Mary was filled with expectations of her own. I don't know, but I believe she was very concerned with her condition. Her husband was having uh, some difficulty fulfilling the law during these difficult days. She was forced to travel great distances just to satisfy the law. Joseph, as you recall, had to return to his homeland to satisfy his taxes. I can imagine that Mary had some troubling days on this journey because she was with child, and especially because she was with the child by the Holy Ghost. I can only imagine the anxiety going through her mind as she pondered this great and unexplainable mystery. Oh, how I imagine her faith to be tested as she wondered and prayed to God that she might deliver a healthy baby. I believe that she was much like other mothers in her expectations. She, perhaps more than any mother in history, had to wonder just what she had gotten herself into. Mary, though, was a devout Jew. Even in the midst of her own anxiety, she was diligent in her desire to satisfy the Mosaic law, whatever sac sacrifice she had to make. So here we are at the crossroads Created by the expectations of the Jewish people, Simeon and Mary, the virgin vessel chosen for this special delivery, Mary just wanted what every mother wants, a healthy baby. The Jewish people wanted a deliverer. And Simeon wanted to see the glory of God while he was in the land of the living. The Bible says, but when the time was right, God sent his son. When the time was right, Mary made ready her sacrifice of joy. When the time was right, Simeon waited for the Messiah of Israel. Within the biblical record, there is evidence that the time was right for God to act in human affairs. Yet even in the midst of finite longings and heightened expectations, only God could look at yesterday, today, and tomorrow and know what the world needs and needed. But who in that day could imagine a king? Who had any idea that God was looking beyond 2020, even as God was paying close attention to the human dilemma over 2,000 years ago? Only God could look simultaneously at yesterday and tomorrow and know just what the world need, needed and needs. I know how God must have looked at our times. God, no doubt, looked at the 2020 snapshot of incarcerated women who are often frightened or else forgotten children with AIDS and other parental onset diseases with little hope for life beyond 14 years of age. There are parents with a pocket full of pot and no possibilities. Some women are still searching for Mr. Goodbar and men are looking for new ways to bar goodness. In 2020, there are Republicans and Democrats fighting with each other to keep from fighting social dysfunction and societal shortcomings. We are denominations bickering over bodies and neglecting human souls. Leaders around the world fighting each other over resources while destroying the human resource. Only God can know that a godless world needs a solution that exceeds our highest expectations. But even if we could have been part of that ancient scene in Jerusalem or fully utilized our historical prerogatives, who among us 
could imagine a king, not just an earthly king, but a king bearing deliverance, forgiveness, and great joy for the world, the king of kings and lord of lords himself. Only God could satisfy the parameters of our universal and timeless predicaments. In Jesus, we, we got a Savior for all people in all times. In Jesus, we received the Messiah of the world then, now, and forevermore. In Jesus, Mary got her longed-for baby boy. And Simeon saw his Messiah. In Jesus... Sally finds her way from the sidewalk, and Samuel's son finds salvation. In Jesus, the blind are brought to sight, and the sighted are offered salvation. In Jesus, God sent a son, a savior, a Super Bowl MVP, and a Samson. In Jesus, the lame man walks again, and the deaf woman hears her own name. In Jesus, the marvelous and mighty counselor, that magnificent marshal of righteousness, God gave us a guarantee of godliness and a gift of perfect peace. When the time was right, God wrapped up all goodness in swaddling clothes and gently laid all power in a Bethlehem manger just so our hopes might be helped and our expectations made manifest. I don't know how many of us got what our eyes wanted to see for Christmas, but our souls got a resting place and our hearts got a release. God said, when the time is right, I will send my son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God said, when I get ready, I will give up my glory in heaven and become your glory on the earth. God determined that in the fullness of time, when the time comes, when the earth is in its deepest need, I will make a new heaven and a new earth. The old shall pass away and the new shall replace all that now is. I don't know about you, but I had all my expectations exceeded in Jesus Christ. I was not satisfied yesterday with temporal gifts. I did not reach the level of my expectations in any worldly thing. But when I received Jesus, I did not reach the level of my expectations in many things. But I received Jesus. I'm like the buyer in the story I once heard. The story goes like this. There was an eccentric old man who seemed to collect everything. Throughout his lifetime, he had accumulated great wealth. But after his son died, the only thing that mattered to him was the portrait he had painted of his son from memory. The story goes that this old man left a special provision in his will with special instructions to auction off all his possessions upon his death. The major provision was that this less than flattering looking picture of his son had to be the first thing auctioned. Well, it seems that as the auctioneer began the sale, he asked, how much will you bid for this picture? I know it does not look like much, but this was his son whom he loved very much. Who will make me a bid? Someone who had little hopes of buying very much decided that he could at least bid on this one thing, so he bid 50 cents. Who will give me a dollar, barked the auctioneer. When no one responded, he asked, who will give me 75 cents? The lone bidder considered his worth and, and by faith 
offered the additional quarter. He shouted above the disapproving crowd, gathered 75 cents. Who will give me a dollar? With no bitters, he said, sold to that man for 75 cents. Then he said, okay, that ends the auction. The crowd who had come to purchase the valuable items in the collection began to protest. Then the auctioneer came forward and said, the old man was truly eccentric, but his will was very clear. The picture of his son was the first thing to be auctioned, for he said that whoever receives his son gets everything. Perhaps God is somewhat like this man. God so loved his son and the world that he gave us his son to save us. Who could imagine such a priceless gift? You know, sometimes the greatest gifts are wrapped in peculiar packages. Sometimes God's greatest offerings to us are garbed in ordinary people. Sometimes God uses the poor, the destitute, the lame, and blind people of this world to set us free. I believe that we in the church are too busy sometimes looking at the package, even as we overlook or ignore the gifts that God gives to us. We choose the talented over the less talented, we select the rich over the poor. We pick the best and the brightest and ignore the least and loneliest. We give full scholarships to the gifted and talented while we allow the disadvantaged and ordinary to waste in their own poverty. We give gifts to the gifted and withhold pennies from the penniless. I would think that after Jesus, we might be more able to house a poor pregnant girl and her husband in the Grand Hyatt than we are to allow them to sleep on our cold streets. Who could expect that Mary's little baby, born in a stable, might be the reason for this season of joyful expectations and exceedingly great joy? Sometimes we need to rethink our mode of operations and we need to do it God's way. Amen.
place today. May we continue to be the light and go out and break through the darkness of this world and be the light that someone might see your light and so come to honor and receive Jesus as Lord of their lives. Go in peace and be so bright, so full of light, that others might see your light and come to worship him. Amen. <laughs>